This episode is sponsored by Skillshare. Now, Skillshare is an online learning community, and it's got thousands of inspiring classes for creative people or curious people and, well, anybody. This month, I did customizing type with Aaron Draplin. Now, I've always been into logo design and graphic design, and in Aaron's class, he walks you through different ways of integrating type into a unique design to create a logo. And like Aaron, there's tons of other teachers on there teaching really wonderful skills and amazing courses. Now, like my other sponsorships with Skillshare, there's a link down below for the first 1,000 people to go visit the site, sign up, you get free access to their premium membership, and then after that, it's about 10 bucks a month. So go check out that link down below. Thanks, Skillshare, and enjoy the episode. Okay, so we're going for it right now. 24, this is near your, the max. Hey guys, welcome to another episode. Today I'm with Eve again. He is the grip strength master champion, super strong climber, one of the best in Canada. And today he's gonna walk us through some of his training regime, some of the things he does to get super strong grip. He is the top guy on the lattice rung for grip strength, best in the world. I need help with this. Eve's gonna help, he's, he's holding the camera right now. Eve's gonna help me out because I need to improve my grip strength and hopefully help you out too. Are you ready? I'm ready. What are we up to now? What do you got hey guys, for us? So the here? first thing I thought I would show you is, uh, I'll show you some of the ideas I got from arm lifting from grip sport and how we can apply them for climbing something that could help you. Uh, so the first thing we're gonna go, we're gonna choose a, a portable hangboard like this. These are getting really popular, a lot of different brands. Uh, mine's from a company called Digit. And what we're gonna use today, we're gonna use uh, good size edge like about a full pad so 18 millimeters and one of the advantages of training like this is that it's really easy to structure the intensity of your of your training since you don't have to calculate your body weight you can do everything from the ground so you can uh, all you need to it's really minimal you don't need a hang where you don't need a big setup all you need is this thing here and you can use your weight you can sling them if you don't have you can use one of these pins I have like kind of like these fancy loading pins to put some weights on but if you don't have that you know you can just like use a a piece of rope, sling that, like kettlebells, whatever you have. So I'll show you a few, couple of tips. If you have one of these hang boards, one thing you can do uh, to prevent from, from tilting and stuff. So one of the things, if you would just hang it from the bottom, sometimes when you pull on it, it kind of like goes on the slope side of it. So if you want to keep it on the straight, what I do is I just put the sling behind here with, uh, with that, and that prevents a lot from the, I don't know if you can see that, but that helps a lot with the spinning. So it keeps it nice and straight. So it doesn't move as you're lifting. One of the methods I do when I, I do my training, so instead of doing like a big warm up and then say climbing for about 45 minutes or something like that, and then go straight to my training loads, I do a specific training for each one of them. So that gets me ready and primed up to, to like do really big lifts without injuring myself too. And it's also, it's a really good way to warm up for each specific exercise that really reduce the, the risk of injuries. It's at a lower intensity, but it still adds, adds some volume to your, to your session. First thing you wanna do when you do a training like this is you wanna figure out your max. So there's tons of different ways to do that. You know, you can do a hang. If you're, an, I'd say a, a, a beginner intermediate, I would do a hang, like a hang for about five to seven seconds and count that as your mask, it'll be a, uh, as your max. That'll be a little bit conservative, but it's gonna be a great way to prevent injury and also build up from there. It's gonna be easy for you to get gains and it's gonna help with your confidence as well. So first thing you have to do is figure out your max. So once you figure out your max, so for this example, we'll use, for my max, it's gonna be 100 kilos with the, with, with the 18, so full pad. 100 kilos. Okay. 100 kilos, yeah. Jeez. Yeah. Okay, so we'll use, <laughs> we'll, we'll use that max for that rung, okay? Yeah. I'll, I'll build progressively, so you'll see. When I warm up, so I'll start at 50% of my max. So for that in pounds, so usually it's gonna be around 50 kilos. It makes it nice because it's easy for us to calculate. As an example, I'll start up with five reps and I'll do one set of that. Since it's the warm up sets, I always do one set of them and I build progressively. And then you'll see my main set. I'll do a couple sets of my main sets. Usually okay. four or five sets, depending on the, the training day, depending on the load from that day and the, the week that I'm not in my training, all right? So what we do, same thing in climbing, we're really used to doing a lift and then holding it there for five, 10 seconds, depending on your training protocol. And this method, what we're gonna do is the repetitions are gonna dictate the intensity a lot. 
Okay, so we're gonna do five reps, all right? And how I do this, so I try to keep my, uh, my back straight too, my arm with a slight bend too, to prevent, and then I wouldn't go full crimp, especially at first, maybe semi crimp is a great, great way to do it. Make sure you got four fingers on it, okay? And we're gonna lift up, and we're gonna breathe down. That's gonna be a rep, okay? We're not gonna hold it there for like five seconds, 10 seconds, and then bring it down. So we're gonna do up, one, and down. Up, and then down. So we're gonna do five reps, three, four and five and bring it down and I'll do the other side so this way it's nice and it's comfortable for me you know it gets my finger primed up ready for for the edge of your lifts gets everything warmed up and five all right so next Bounce. thing I'll do I'll take a good rest my rest time I usually like I prefer to take long rest full recovery so around four to five minutes in between my set Usually not to waste too much time. In between, I'll do either a different, so if I'm working on a finger exercise, so in between my rest set, I'll do something for the upper body, maybe a weight training exercise, or I'll do um, something for the abs or a stretching exercise, make it my, my session a bit more productive. Eve, you've been, you've been training forever. How did you start getting uh, your exercise routine set up? Did you, did, did you learn it from other people or did yeah, you come up with it yourself? I try to inspire, um, inspire my, my training a lot by a lot of different sports and stuff and like coaches that I really admire from different sports. Uh, right now, one of my, I have a couple of books that I really like. One is the uh, Olympic, uh, no, the Chinese weightlifting manual. It's a really good book. I'll maybe, uh, maybe Andrew can put it in the bio. I'll, I'll send him the link for you guys to check it out. But the sports science is really good behind it too and how they separate the books in different elements. This is one of my favorite books. It's not specific to climbing, but it's really easy to adapt some of the principle to it. I really like that one. Uh, another one of my favorite coaches, uh, Russian powerlifting coach, Boris Shaiko. So I love that guy. You'll probably see me a lot with that that t-shirt from uh, with his name on it so a lot of my trainings and stuff I've been heavily influenced from that that coach but I'm always experimenting with different ports different stuff and stuff and see if I like it if it works well I keep it and then if it doesn't you know it's it's really good like there's nothing wrong to experiment and stuff but uh, yeah always looking for different things different ideas to push my training and uh, get better for sure so next one we'll do is just an accessory lift. So usually in between, I'll do, I'll do kind of like a strength exercise or a stretching exercise, just so I don't waste too much time, like just sitting down for five minutes or something. So what we'll do, we'll do bicep curl. We'll work on like, right now I'm in the phase where I do a lot of, uh, a lot of conditioning. Most of the stuff I'm doing is uh, body weight, like circuit style training. So very, sh low, uh, very little recovery time and then a lot of exercise just to get in, in general fitness and stuff and prevent injury in the early part of the season. But uh, today we're gonna do this one. So the, today's a strength training. So in between, uh, this is an accessory lift. So I usually never lift like close to my limit on this. Uh, we'll try this. I usually am used with my plates at home or in kilos. So it's a little bit of a, not an adaptation, switching <laughs> for pounds, but uh, I think this is kind of close. So we'll give it a go. So we got six reps and usually I'll do around five, five sets of this sit up. And then another thing that's important too when uh, you're doing strength training is the tempo of your uh, of your exercise. So there's a there's a big difference. A lot of people, you know, they see weight weightlifting, weight training, and they they always think about bodybuilding. So there's a very different way if you're lifting weights for bodybuilding, the tempo and the pace, like it's going to be very different than if you're doing it for a specific, a sport specific. So for, if you want to keep a lot of, build a lot of power and stuff, the tempo is really important. Um, so the, the up phase, the concentric phase, I usually go very explosive and then control on the way down. Okay, that's really good. It's really important because it uh, helps you maintain a lot of explosiveness. And if you're doing uh, um, body, body, body building, then you're gonna go really slow, really to work and isolate that exact muscle. But for us, the neuromuscular uh, part of the of the exercise is very important to being able to use all the different mu uh, muscle group and work together. So that's uh, that's something like you can 
use in your in your your training that it works for me maybe if it's gonna hopefully it's gonna work for you guys all right so next thing we're gonna move on to the second set of uh warm ups the next one is like 60 percent of my uh of my max eve how often are you doing workouts like this when i'm on a serious training phase plan or whatever i usually train five six days a week but the intensity and the volume will change a lot so there's days that the intensity is going to be really high like between 80 to 90 that's going to be high intensity days and then sometimes it's going to be a bit lower between 70 70 to to 80 for strength and then if I'm do sometimes I'm gonna have circuit days where I do like really light or conditioning, a lot of stretchings and stuff. But almost every day I try to do a little bit of something. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. But yeah, I never get I don't really get overtrained because the sessions are really short as well too. Most of the time when I do strength sessions, it really goes over two hours. So like if I even if I climb so this I train a lot but it's very very short and I'm always very fresh when I train too. I think that's another important thing that a lot of people do like they do crazy session or they're gonna go climb for like three four hours and then they're gonna come in and do like a strength training session but it's really hard to get better because if you're straining strength and you're already like training tired so one good thing i would say to probably try to train fresh like if you want to if you if your if your goal is to get stronger while well, training being fresh is going to be very important to, to, to do. Wow, okay, yeah. okay. And now we're going to go at four reps, okay? So okay. one set again. One, two, three, four. So still comfortable. Okay. And that's the set. Go. Nice. Okay, and then usually I'm going to go back in between my rest and I'll do another set of my whether ever exercise, accessory exercise or stretching that I was doing in between my, uh, my thing. So next one is the last set of like the, the warm up before we do the main set. So at 70%, so I'll do two, three, three reps for this one. One, two, Three reps. And then the last one, we're gonna do the main set. And we'll do double, so two reps, and we'll do four sets of that. Down. And that's it. If you feel that it's if you feel that you're tired that day too, it's okay to lower the, the lower the weights down, you know. Try to listen to your body. That's a really important part too, as well. If you feel it's too heavy, then just you can. It's okay to take a little bit down or reduce the reps. One other important thing that I always do when I, I train too is I never go to failure. So, uh, say if my my max would be five reps, I would always stop or like uh, a hang. I'm doing a hang, and it would be like five seconds, like at my max. So either either reps or time, I always stop before before that's really I think it's another important important concept in strength training never go to absolute failure so that way you, you don't get injured and yeah, you stay yeah, fresh yeah and that's something I've always done and even before I've, I've learned about it uh, in my training it was always something that I was oh, doing the lights went out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I was doing without even noticing and it's maybe one of the keys that helped me progress a lot in climbing. We've got some really dramatic lighting going on right now. <laughs> <laughs> the lights went out, but we've wow. got the, the, the one up here now. This is crazy. All right, let me know. Eve is also a, 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 a grip today in another sense. <laughs> He's the gaffer on set here. You've just done a bit of your, your training session. Yeah. And we're going to try and get the lattice the lattice test going. Yeah, we'll play on the lattice, see if uh, what we can do on that today. So just so people know, just so people know for a second though, yeah. you got the lattice rung up here. It's about 20, right? Yeah, I think it's around 20. It's around 20. It's very close to what we did the early on, on the, uh, we did on the other exercise. So we're yeah. already pretty much warmed up into it. So now we'll, we'll slow, we'll keep that same, same structure. We'll slowly add weight. We'll see how that feels. We'll see 25. I haven't tried this test since I, uh, I did it uh, since you last, destroyed last, the record last year, so we'll, <laughs> we'll give it a try. Uh, so yeah, 
We'll start with 25 first with added weight. I think my weight right now is around 67, 68 kilos. Okay. Yeah. And so people know as well for, for pros like Eve, they hang one arm on the rung and for, for like mere mortals like myself, I can't even hold one arm on this thing. I need two arms, but you can hang one arm, but plus weight. So plus it's weight. whatever your body weight is, plus that percentage of added weight. That's correct. Yes. That's what we're going to try to see. So yeah, I think there's a test as, as well for two hands, but, uh, I think if, if, I think at some point, what's what's at one point too, like when your fingers would get really strong, it becomes like really annoying to strap yourself like a couple hundred pounds to your waist. So it's kind of nice. To, like it, once you get to a certain level, it's nice to go down on one hand because you don't need as much weight. And then same thing, you can repeat the same process going down the size of the holes as well. Yeah. So you're right-handed. Uh, right-handed. We'll do the test. We'll do. I'll, we'll do on both sides though. So we'll do right okay. and left. Okay. Yeah, okay. So we got. Tw we'll start with 25 with one hand. One hand. So I'll go semi-open. Two, three, four, five. So that's pretty, pretty relaxed still. So it's a good sign. That's good. So if you're doing a test like this. Like you usually want to get full recovery to make sure that you have like good performance. So usually I try to rest like four or five minutes like to get a full recovery before I do a next attempt like that. Anything you test, if you're testing for your max, you want to make sure you're fully reco recovered. So next we will try a 45. Please. 45. 45. I'm going to do some math right now. So that should be, tw I think that's 20 kilos. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds yeah. about right. That's where we'll see if I, I'm in good shape or... <laughs> <laughs> if I have to work out more. Sometimes the test becomes the, the exercise too, you know? You could do this exercise, this test as an exer as an exercise to just make sure you don't you don't test your max every day because yeah, you'll get overtrained pretty fast. Yeah. What's your favorite exercise to do in between? St like I like to stretch usually. I'll do kind of like my finger training first, like usually the harder exercise, I'll do them first. And I'll, I'll do my warm up and stretching at the same time in between my, my, my main, my lifts. And then usually if I train at home, then I'll, I'll try to go train on my home wall. So maybe we can show that uh, while we wait. I can show my book. I brought my, I you brought got my, your book? Okay, cool. Yeah, the so master this binder. My, this is my, my binder. Of, this is the red book of all the boulder problems. Well, on the red book of some of the boulder problems I have on my, on my home wall. So what I do usually, like right now, I just restarted a new, a new training cycle because I took a, a long break. I just needed like a little break to refresh, uh, just to, to, to relax a little bit and stuff. I was really busy with work, so took a good break and now I'm starting again. And usually when I restart, I like to reprint a new sheet. So I kind of restart at zero on the, on the binder. So I print a new one and I have the number, like the boulders, so all the number of the, the boulder. This one has 40 boulder problems, the names, the grade. And then every time I send a boulder problem, I write down the, the date and stuff. This is something that maybe some of you could do on the home wall. It's a really fun way to uh, to keep motivated from from training at home. You can even do it at your gym too on the on the app. The, one of the reasons why I don't like the apps is uh, I I don't want any distraction like go on my phone. So I try to keep technology away from that's me smart. when I'm training. So that's why I like like old school binders because you know I I can just focus on my training. It's so easy nowadays like go on social media yeah. and start playing around. You're on Instagram, you, know? you yeah, lose yeah, yeah. 10 minutes. And then I have days that like, if I want to make videos or like play around, like I'll have like fun days. And then that's when I'll put my camera and like, you know, make some Instagram videos. But the rest of the time, like, you know, it's not always what we see on, uh, on the social media that really happens. But yeah, so I got this binder. What I do, I have, uh, I, I circle, I basically just take a picture of my home wall. I make kind of like this. these, uh, laminates here so i laminate them so it doesn't get all chalky and dirty and all that and then how big uh, is this wall uh, i don't know maybe like i'd say maybe something around between seven and eight feet wide and a bit higher than this i don't know there's like this whole culture around home walls yeah not just in the uk people in the uk love it but there's a lot of people out there especially now in the lockdown it's like yeah it's, there's a lot of pride and and like uh, enjoyment out of yeah, it's, it's, it's something fun, like in, in, there's, I mean, I, I see, I've saw two things like in Omwal, there's people that 
love them and they're always going to train on them I, I think i was one of those person and then there's people that make a home wall but they never go on it and i think the key to making a good home wall is really to make something like this is really good you know set problems like just put one problem like really good problems and make some project for yourself like i had projects in this book that took me like eight years to do so it's really cool like when you finally do what? something you go check and write the date and stuff eight years yeah wow. yeah eight years so i got some pretty crazy one like very few of them ever got repeated too like very few i think maybe two two boulders ever got repeated from from the 40. Oh my yeah God. so it's pretty cool it's it's fun it's, it's really fun so what i do i just like circle the holes on this i i basically i made this to be honest i made it to for for friends so that they don't have because i memorize most of the boulders i memorize but i made it so that like if they come they can like look at the binder and choose a boulder problem and give it a try but yeah so yeah so i make a binder like this with different boulder problems just circle the holes and That's stuff amazing uh, write the grade and then what i have here usually i have a stack of pictures too so that if i make a new boulder problem i just kind of like circle it down and then when i get it i kind of like grade it and i'll make a new binder or something with uh, some more boulder problems so it's, this is a great way to uh to uh to have fun on your trading wall you can make a lot of different exercise too like uh like ladders like we did right now so say like if you climb v10 you can start at like v5 and do like a ladder and do some main sets you can apply the same training we did there but on your own wall so that's just keep it fun and uh, i think that's the best way to to uh to train on those walls those small walls and you have to know i think one thing too is like Home walls are good for specific things. They're really good to build strong fingers and like body tension and like strength because they're so small, you're not going to get a lot of technique out of them. So yeah, if you if you build it specifically with a goal in mind to or make bolder problems to work on weaknesses, it's a really I'd say I think it's a really good way to uh, to get better. What's yeah, the yeah. what's the angle of yours? Minus 40. So very very similar to uh, the moonboard. Yeah, yeah, it's not very good carpentry, so it varies between like 38 <laughs> and 40, 41 degrees or something like that. So, but uh, yeah, that's my fault. Yeah, it was actually at my parents when I was younger. It was at my dad's. And uh, when I bought a house, I didn't want to take down any of my boulder problems. So I just like unscrew the panels and I re-put it exactly in the basement. But the basement of the house that we bought, it was actually like a little bit, a little oh, bit yeah. steeper. Yeah. So I didn't want to change anything. But I, when I put it there, I couldn't do anything at first because just those couple degrees more made it so hard. It took me a long time to kind of like adapt, <laughs> adapt to that, that new angle and everything felt a, a lot harder. Yeah, yeah. So let's give it a try. Have okay, a what try. are we at now again? We're gonna try uh, 45 pounds. So 45. 20, should be around 20 kilos. And one thing I've seen a lot of people have trouble with, with uh, one arm dead hangs is the spin. So you need strong shoulder to be able to stabilize. So a lot of people will kind of like, they start hanging and then they'll spin, but they can't, they can't stop that spin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's a cool exercise that I came up with that uh, people could probably do is uh, hang from a, a jug. And the exercise you want to do is to work on like being able to stabilize your shoulder. So. I would hang here and I will move and I would stop wherever I want, kind of like start moving. I stop, stop. So it builds a lot of control in your shoulders so that when I do these exercises, I don't start spinning. And like a lot of people will start spinning and they'll fall because they keep spinning, they can't stop the spin. So you can do that exercise just to build a lot of control and strengthen those shoulders so that you don't. You so don't just spin. hold a jug. Yeah, and you then... just hold a good hold. And another thing you can do as well. If you do, if like you got the finger, some people have the fingers or they're strong enough, but they, can, they can't control the spin. So a lot of people, what they'll do is they'll put a little, their hand a little bit on the side to prevent yeah. from spinning. Yeah. But this is a great way to quickly fix that and so you won't spin anymore. I like yeah. that. If you're training your shoulders, it's okay to hang from a jug and you know, like isolate the two. So say if you're doing your one arm that, or you're getting close to doing one arm that hangs, and you still have shoulders with that, this could be one of the exercise you do as well, like uh, as an accessory lift or something like that. Okay, so we're going for it right now. We're going for 24, so. 24, this is near your, the max. Okay. 
Oh my god. So on the right, this close to my limit right now, I think. It's probably close to that five seconds. I didn't really count, but, uh, and then the left, I probably have a little bit more in the tank. I could probably pull. We can try, we can try a bit more. Yeah. Dude. Let's give one more shot. So wait, I gotta show these. You put on some anklets right now. I didn't have a weight vest, so we'll try. No weight we'll vest. Put, uh, 10 more pounds, um, five kilos onto this. So you got this ball to help you out for a second. Ready? Yep. Ugh, that's pretty close. We'll have to oh do my a finish. That was five seconds, but so that's close to your to your record right now. Uh, yeah, it's, it's actually with my weight, it's probably for like the absolute absolute record. Like, uh, it's probably higher because I'm heavier. Relative weight is I don't know. It would have to check. Yeah. Relative, like, it means compared to my body weight. That's what really matters in climbing. Absolute. Absolute strength is like how much weight you can lift with like overall like with everything so yeah if I remember correctly like when I did the first the first test I think I had both like the absolute and the relative straight record so but this one's probably gonna be a bit higher in the absolute because I'm heavier I'm like probably 68 kilos we can check it right now my weight with the extra added weight would be 97 kilos I think we should try 100 kilos just for fun. Yeah? Yeah, I think we should. You're up for it? Kilos. Okay. We should definitely try 100 kilos. Okay. That's so close. 97. I really want to do 100 kilos now. Let's see if we can do uh, 100 kilos. 100 total kilos. Total so, as far as you know, has this ever been done? I don't. I don't <laughs> think so. I don't think that's five seconds, but <laughs> I mean, it's definitely possible. Yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe a little bit of training and then I think we can do it. Like the fact that you can even hold that is insane. Yeah, you For... can even see at, at this way, the spin, I, I can start to get affected by spin, even though like usually I can control the spin really well. Yeah. But with that amount of weight, it puts so much stress on the shoulders. That's why I don't like to add too much weight. That's thing, that's why I'm falling too, because I start to spin and then like the wrist rotates and gets harder to hold on to. So campusing? Campusing. I this is an abrupt finish, but I was gonna try and do this in one episode, but I think I'm gonna do two now. So this one was exercise for grip strength plus Eve possibly doing a new world record. Uh, next episode he's gonna show us some campusing stuff. Uh, that's insane as well. And I need a whole new episode for that because it's, it's just too much to do. It's crazy too, because he did this all in one night, which is nuts. So, okay, so back to myself, I think I'm gonna do the official outro, but stay tuned for the next one with Eve. Bye. All right, that's the episode. Thank you, Eve, for the session. That was amazing. I'm always blown away by how strong he is. If I could be half as strong as him, I would be super happy. But go check him out on Instagram. He puts tons of training footage up there and stuff that he's doing to keep the site going. Great time to work on finger strength. I hope you enjoyed it. Subscribe, like, share the video, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.